Hey everybody, this video is on linear algebra and it is on determining whether vectors are linear combinations. So here we have two vectors, u and v. And what we want to know is this vector down here, w, is the vector w a linear combination of u and v? So how do we solve that? Well, the, according to the book, and I'm just going to read you the definition straight from the textbook so it can confuse you. Oh, let's see, where did it go? I should have had this prepared. Okay, here we go. So it says, if W is a vector in a vector space V, then W is said to be a linear combination of the vectors V1, V2, all the way through VR. In V, if vector w can be expressed in the form um, vector w is equal to k1 times v1 plus k2 times v2 plus <coughs> uh, excuse me <coughs> all the way to kr vr so really what they're saying is this they're saying let me just show you real quick what they're saying is if you have a vector w and they're saying well vector w if you multiply uh, vector u, uh, let's get rid of that one. If you vector, if you multiply vector ku by k1, and then you multiply vector v by k2, that if you multiply these two vectors by some constant, and you add them together, then you should be able to get w vector w. But that sounds kind of weird, so. Uh, let's just show you how you're going to solve this. And really what they mean is, so if I multiply this guy up here, uh, u, by some constant, and I multiply this guy, u, by, or uh, the vector v by some constant, then I should be able to get these values here. So, but, I mean, how do you actually do that? So, let's go ahead and do this. So, first thing I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write these, all three of these vectors together in a matrix. So the first one is, <coughs> I'm sorry, excuse me, it's a 1, 2, negative 1. So we're going to write right here 1, negative, wait, no, that's not a negative. It's going to be 1, 2, negative 1. This is going to be the vector u. Now we're going to have the second one, v, which is 6, 4, and 2. And you're going to write it 6, 4, 2. And the next one we're going to write is vector w. This is the one we want to test. And that's 9, 2, and 7. So 9, 2, 7. Okay, so now let's go ahead and solve this. So the first, oh wait, so this is vector v, and that's w. So now what we want to do is we want to reduce this down to reduce row echelon form. So first thing we're going to do is, well, we're going to work on this first column. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this this row and I'm going to add it to row three. So I'm going to do, I'm going to leave the first row alone. And I'm going to leave the second row alone too. I'm just going to do this step by step because I don't want anything to be confused. So what I'm doing is I'm doing row three uh, plus row one. <coughs> oh, sorry, I'm a little under the weather. So anyhow, <coughs> if I add one to negative one, I'm going to get a zero. If I add six to two, I'm going to get eight. If I add nine to seven, I'm going to get 16. Okay, so that's the first step. But I still have a value here underneath this one. And in order to get it into reduced row echelon form, all the leading ones have to have zeros underneath them. So I still need to get rid of this too. So let me scroll down a bit. So in order to get rid of this too, I have to add negative 2 to it. So I'm going to do, uh, first thing, I'm going to leave the first row alone. And I'm going to leave this, the third row alone. So I'm just going to write them down. I'm just going to copy them right down. 6, 9, 0, 8, 16. I'm doing nothing to them, just copying them down. So now I'm going to say row 2. And I'm going to subtract 2 times row 1. 
So if I do 2 times row 1, that's going to be a negative 2. And I'm going to add that to this one, to row 2. So that should be 0. Next, I'm going to do this one, 6 times negative 2, which will give me negative 12. Um, and then I'm going to add that to 4, so that's going to give me a negative 8. Next, I'm going to do 9. <coughs> um, negative, or, uh, 9 times negative 2 is going to give me negative 18, plus 2 is going to give me negative 16. Okay, we're almost there. So, next thing we need to do is we need to get rid of, well, if you look at row 2 and row 3, they're, they're exactly the same thing, except one's negative and one's positive. So, all I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of row 3. So, I'm going to add row 2 to row 3. So, I'm going to leave these two alone. I'm, I'm just doing it step by step. I could do more steps in if I wanted to, but that could get kind of confusing and I don't want to do that. So... I'm just going to copy row 1 all. I'm just going to copy it. And next I'm going to copy this one. Now, if I add 0 to 0, I get a 0. Add negative 8 to 8, that gives me a 0. Negative 16 to 16 gives me a 0. And so all I did was I said uh, row 3 plus row 2 and to get this step right here. So now, after I do this, now I'm going to work on row 2. Well, actually, just to make it clear, what I, the first thing I did is I, I worked on the first leading one, and I got zeros underneath it. After I do that, I need to work on this value right here to turn this into a leading one. And since it's row, um, it's reduced row echelon form, you want to have zeros underneath it and above it. If this is just Gaussian, you would only have to worry underneath, or the forward phase. But since this is reduced row echelon form, you need to worry about the forward phase, which means the zeros underneath the leading ones. And then you'd have to worry about the, for, I'm sorry, for reduced row echelon form, you have to worry about the zeros underneath the leading ones and above the leading ones. So let's get started on that. So here we got this one. We need to turn this to a one. So I'm just gonna multiply row two row 2 times negative 1 over 8. I'm not doing anything else to any of the other rows. That's a sloppy one. Okay, so it's, this is going to be a 6, 9, 0, 0. Now, negative, or negative 8 times negative 1 over 8 is going to give you 1. Negative 8 times negative... 1 over 8. <coughs> the two negatives cancel. That gives you a plus. These 8's cancel out and you're just left with 1. Okay, so now you're going to do uh, negative 16 times negative 1 over 8. That's just going to be positive 2. Uh, and if you wanted to work it out this way, it's the same thing, just negative 16. 1 over negative 16. Uh, I put the negative down here. It doesn't really matter where it is. It can be in the front or down here. It doesn't change anything. So these negatives cancel out. They turn positive. 16s cancel out. Okay, so now we have uh, on our leading one here, it's zeros underneath it and there's nothing above it. This one I have a uh, 6 above it, so I want to get rid of the 6. So, <coughs> oh, sorry. <clears throat> in order to get rid of that 6, I just need to multiply, I'm going to do row 1 uh, minus 6 times row 2. So let's do that. It's going to be 1, 0, 0. Uh, because 1 minus 6 times 0 is still 0. So now it's 6 minus 6 times 1, which is just 0. Next is 9 uh, minus 6 times 2, so that's just uh, negative 3. Uh, and if you wanted to see that, you, it would just look like this. 9 minus 6 times, uh, where is it, uh, 9. Wait, no, it's 9 
that's for R1, minus 6 times R2, R2 is 2, that goes there, so it's just 9 minus 12 equals negative 3. So now next is, we're just going to copy down row 2 because we didn't touch it. So this is going to be 1 and 2, 0, 0. Now before, <coughs> I had mentioned that uh, we're solving for these values, uh, where are you at? K1 and K2, and K2. So it actually turns out that this value is going to be K1 and this one will be K2. I'll show you in a second. So K1 is going to be equal to negative 3 and K2 is going to be equal to 2. Um, and now you can check this just by plugging them back into the to the vectors to make sure that they, they add up correctly. So uh, let's see, we've got you're going to test it out on this. Let me just copy it real quick and drag it down so we can have a nice visual and so I don't have to recopy everything. Uh, copy. No, no, just paste. Okay, so now let's test it out. So you're going to actually plug in this value of K1 and K2 into here. So we're going to say um, uh, let's see K1 times U1 plus K2 times V1. Oops, get rid of that. And that's going to be equal to uh, W1. And this translates to this row right here. So now let's see. K1 we said was negative 3. Oh, we don't want that. U1 is just 1 plus K2, which is 2, times V1, which is 6. And that should be equal to 9. So if we test this out, negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. 2 times 6 is 12. So negative 3 plus 12 is equal to 9. So for the first one, it checks out. And we can test this for each of them. So if we did the second row, we wanted to test that out. We could say 2. Um, well, actually... It would be K1 times U2 plus K2 times V2 equal to V2, or W2, I'm sorry. And this 2 is just represents this row. This would be row 1, this is row 2, and this is row 3. So now plugging, and the values of K1 and K2 don't change. So K1 is three, uh, negative 3 again. U2 is this value here, 2. Plus K2, which is 2. Times V2, which is 4. And W2 is 2. So if we test this out, we'd get um, negative 6 plus 8 is equal to 2. And that checks out. So uh, that's actually how you would check to see if they are. Oh, I forgot this guy right here. Okay, so that's that's how you would check to see if they are linear combinations um, of. That's how you would check if W is a linear combination of U and V. So that's so this is so the way we'd say this we'd say uh, vector W is a linear uh, combination of u and v. So uh, vector w is a linear combination of vector u and vector v. So that's how you do that. I hope that made sense. Um, if not, I can make up. Well, actually, I want to make one more where they don't. They don't actually. Um, where there, where U and V are not actual linear, or I'm sorry, where W, where vector W 
is not a linear combination of U and V. So you can see what that looks like. So, all right, I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you liked it, please like it. Uh, if it really helped you out and you're real thankful, hey, you can always make a donation at my website. Any donation is awesome. You can make a donation of a dollar or five bucks, whatever you want. So anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, check out video two. That'll show you when it's not a linear combination of two vectors. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.